Uh, hi. Uh, this is Super Lumi Live. Uh. Hmm. Ah, uh, what to explain? Uh, it's a 2D platformer where the main mechanic you have to work with is a double jump. Uh, I'm not certain if this is buffering on my end or if it's just not started yet, but... Uh, M, if you're ready to go, I can give you a countdown. Uh, we can start in three, two, one, go. Okay, so Super Lumi Live is a 2D platformer. You have to get through a number of levels. Uh, in the all levels main ending category, that is... Uh, you have to get through all 52 of the levels that are before the main ending of the game. That is the ending in the final uh, world before you get the credits. That are before the main. Now, uh, it's really important in this category to be very consistent to be able to get through all of the levels uh, every single time within a solid amount of time. A key to that is uh, another key to just being able to get through that is getting the right numbers of collectibles. Now, there are uh, two different types of collectibles that you're seeing. There's these that you'll see them collecting uh, when they're in the way. And there's the gold ones that you'll see them going out of the way for. Now, the reason for the differences between them, uh, the silver collectibles, there are in every level uh, except for certain of the uh, boss levels uh, where there are only three golds. Uh, another thing to note, there are these secret exits that we do have to take because there are levels before the main ending. Uh, gold, there are only three of them per level and there are far less in the way. You have to make sure to collect enough of both of them to unlock all the levels and eventually beat the game. To unlock all the levels for the ending, you need 32 gold. Uh, and to beat the game, you need 450 silver. So that's the two requirements that you have. It ends up by the time you need the gold, a one per level, uh, and there's few enough per level, like 10 or fewer, that all of them that you need should be all completely in the way. Something very important in this uh, game, just in general, to take note of is uh, all the different cycles that you have to make. Uh, there's cycles on all of the platforms that are moving, on all of the moving uh, discs, all of the moving enemies. And uh, you need to know how each of those lines up to just generally get through it quickly, to know where you need to jump, uh, what's safe, and everything. 1-5 is a level where the cycles matter quite a bit because there's a cycle about halfway through the level. Uh, you need to be making uh, relatively quickly to get the fastest cycle on these platforms. Uh, something really cool about the levels in general, each single level has its own particular theme. Uh, the, uh, the levels are all very different from one another boss levels are just kind of a conglomeration of everything else in that world. So, for example, this level, 1-boss, uh, will uh, kind of 
put together all of the other levels, all of the concepts in them. And it's one of the first places where we're seeing intentional resets uh, just to reset platform cycles and positions. The cycle that you reset to there uh, will just put you farther ahead and closer to the end of the level. So naturally, it's advantageous to reset the platform there to move in faster through. And that's already world one. This is a very fast paced game. Uh, you're going to see 51 levels in just over 51 minutes, really. Uh, World 2 changes up a lot of things. It introduces these uh, green bounce platforms first. Uh, they uh, will bounce you in the direction that the arrow is pointing, which for the most part in this level is going to be up, although later you will see something pointing down and eventually pointing in all directions. When you hit into them, you get bounced in the direction that they point, as I said, and then you also uh, get your double jump, which is important because uh, then use that double jump to get even more distance and height. Uh, then use that double jump to get even more distance and height. Now we're in 2-3, we've got another secret exit first. This one, all of these are pretty much, you have to find the hidden thing and then f collect the five coins and get into the portal. Uh, this level uh, has a really nice skip that Em's just pulled off where you, instead of uh, doing that the intended way with the gravity flipped up, you can do it where you're just going down with the gravity flipped in that direction. And now it's on to 2-7. 2-7 has a lot of different rotating platforms which are new, and also a lot of these platforms moving backwards and forwards on cycles. It's a very cycle-dependent level and a pretty dangerous level, too, because uh, in order to get some extra gold and just generally go faster, make the fast cycles, you do have to skip a couple of checkpoints right in the middle of the level where it's got some of the most enemies, most dangerous tricks. Now we go back to 2-3, because again, even though we did go to this level before, we do have to beat all of the levels before the main ending, not just enter them, have fun. Uh, uh, so this ending section has a lot of those down arrows that will push you void, basically. Now we go on to the bottom half of World 2. Uh, first of all is 2-4. It's got a bunch of these uh, skips where you're just going to skip a section where the platforms will auto-scroll ahead of you. Uh, and it's just really nice. Pretty much every time there is an auto-scroller in this game, there is a way to either skip it entirely or just to get it to speed up or end faster. Unfortunately, the last auto-scroller of this level is a bit of an exception to that rule, but for the most of that level, you can speed it up greatly by just not waiting. 2-6 introduces an interesting new platform. Uh, two, really. The first you'll see is these blue uh, single jump platforms. Uh, if you do a double jump, uh, the single jump platforms will disappear until you land. 
and they're big. They're the main focus of 2B, uh, where basically the entire level you have to make sure you're not double jumping uh, until you have a safe place to land, or you don't have to land anymore at all. Such as that very end. Uh, now it's back into 2-6, uh, where in the second half we will see. the uh, uh, other new type of platform in this level, which is the single platforms, uh, or the yellow platforms. They will appear when you use your double jump, and they will disappear if you are standing on the solid ground or if you are uh, landed, or if you have just used your single jump to jump off of Right there, that is a really nice skip at the end of that level where you can just skip the climb at the very end. It saves roughly four to five seconds, I'd say, versus the slow fall down and everything. And now we're into 2-5. I believe this is, yeah, this is 2-5. Uh, this level... Uh, main thing is these beige disappearing platforms. They will uh, kind of, I suppose, dissolve is a term. Uh, after you're standing on them for a certain amount of time, a couple of frames it is, I think. Don't know exactly how many. We don't have the data for that, but. And now it's back to 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two has some rotating uh, disc discs. Uh, they're pretty treacherous cause just because of their size. They're the largest size of disc that's rotating. So you have to be very careful with where you're jumping in between them. Otherwise, this is a level... Just like everything else in this world, just get to the end, don't die. Uh, and then the final level of this world, of course, is the boss world, the boss level, two boss. It is an auto-scroller, but it has a uh, special property that if you are standing near the edge of the auto-scroll, that is on the right hand side during this section that's auto scrolling to the right, uh, uh, then you will just speed up the auto. And that uh, saves quite a bit of time, up to more than eight seconds, I believe. There's also that skip in the middle of that section where you basically just skip the second half of the auto scroller. And that saves more like 30 seconds. <laughs> and then the second half of this level, you're auto-scrolling vertically. Uh, and if you're near the top part of the screen, it will move upwards more quickly. And if you're in the middle, it'll go back to being more slow. Right here at the end, there's a series of platforms that you just have to get up, and then it's the end of the world. Three One starts off after that sequence of auto scrollers with another sequence of auto scrollers, of course, because why not? Uh, we've got, uh, again, horizontal scrolling right, and then vertical scrolling upwards. Uh, luckily, the first one, you can just jump off before it reaches the end. 
saves a considerable chunk of time up to 10 seconds. And then this second one is really the most dangerous part because the green cannons are all dependent on how you move for the entirety of the auto scroller. It's really dangerous. But that was a really nice execution of it. Now we've got 3-2. Three, 3-2 two. Three, two is notoriously a level with some of the worst cycles in this game to try to make in terms of speedrunning. That is a really solid 3-2 right there. I'm going to give that around. Now we're on to 3-3. Three, three. This has a secret exit and a normal exit. Uh, secret exit, it's pretty difficult because the way you want to be going around it, you want to be going in the opposite direction that these huge uh, discs are rotating, which makes the timing incredibly tight. It's just because if you're going around the other direction, you just straight up cannot make some of the jumps. And now it's on to 3A. One of the things that's kind of common in this game is you'll have some of these really difficult uh, portal exits that lead to really simple and incredibly short uh, in general uh, flip worlds. Where those are the worlds with the flip tokens that have letters instead of numbers. Now, of course, we have to go through this level again. The second half is the harder half because it introduces these toxies. They will kind of follow you, chase you, and in general, they can be incredibly difficult to dodge. That one in particular is just a nightmare. I have no idea how Em gets it as consistently as she does. And now we're on to uh, the next level, bottom half for 3-4 secret, or portal exit. Uh, World 3 is the first one with uh, three different uh, portal exits. Uh, this one is, they're, they're all fairly challenging, actually. Uh, that one just because of the way the chokies fly. Chokies are these uh, enemies, they move entirely based on cycles. Or cycles, rather. Uh, where you start, when you start, uh, how you're moving, etc. Uh, where you go doesn't really matter as much as how fast in terms of where these chokies will line up. And also, when you last reset is very important. <sighs> That's... Unfortunate, it's very easy to just uh, completely miss that blue key right there. It's one of the more common mistakes in this level, just a very difficult uh, key to get while you're going quickly. Uh, this level, uh, there was a reset in this room just to uh, get those choky sets. Cycles at the very end to line. Uh, and now it's back again to 3 4. We're going to take this top path again just because it's faster than the bottom path. Uh, even if you're not going into the portal. Now, right here, there's a the, uh, little bit of a skip, I guess, uh, where you can skip going to the right side of this room just with a really well-timed jump there. Uh, this level is 
incredibly vertical at this ha uh, second half. And none of the chokey cycles line up well because they're chokies. <laughs> Yeah, what are you gonna do with them? Honestly. Uh, three five uh, has uh, these spike platforms, and they are some of the most ruthless cycles in this game. In terms of whether or not they will kill you, the, these cycles will kill you every single time if you miss them. Uh, it is not a matter of you have a few frames of leniency uh, when it yeah. is popping in, popping out. No, it's pretty much instantaneous. If you are just a little bit early on landing or a little bit late, uh, you will not survive. Uh, sorry. Good day, sir. Uh, and now we have 3-6, which we're going to play pretty much the entire level twice, just because of where the uh, portal exit is. Uh, it's right at the end of the level. Uh, this is completely vertical first and second half the second half scrolls automatically though. and of course you have to get all five coins in the secret exit that jump is incredibly dangerous uh, and then you are right next to the door with the end of the level uh, at the time that you actually just go through the portal and it unlocks one of the easiest levels in the speed run uh, it's also just completely auto scroller after the first part and then we go through the entire level again I don't know what to say. I guess... Hmm. Yeah, it's just the same level again. I've got... Futile, the yellow platforms uh, with an exclamation point on them, uh, those are uh, actually going to disappear as soon as you jump off of them. Uh, when you, if you just stay standing on them, they will stay supporting you, but otherwise, as soon as you jump off, they're, they're gone. Which can make it pretty treacherous uh, when you kind of need to stand on something. Uh, judging from the time, I, I can see that this has been a pretty good level, I guess. <laughs> and now we're on to Three Skull. Three Skull is unique in that it is entirely in the dark. You can never see uh, more than this during the dark sections of the level. Uh, there are two dark sections with one light section between. Uh, and really the key in the dark sections is you just gotta know where everything is and how all of the cycles in these sections line up because one misstep and you've run into a disc. They come at you 
incredibly fast if you're running through this. Uh, in the light sections, though, uh, luckily you can see everything, but it's very short and there's only one of them. And now we're on to the final section of this level. Uh, this is technically an auto scroller. There is all of death chasing you, but you go far too fast to actually see it for more than a few frames. And that's world three, it's on to world four now. Uh, starting with 4-1, this is a level with a mechanic seen nowhere else in the game in that if you collect a total of 13 of the silver collectibles in this level, then you will, uh, a platform will uh, go out that would not otherwise appear. That's a very interesting sort of a mechanic. That platform right there doesn't even uh, come out if you just don't get 13 silver. And that's the only reason we would collect those silver in this level, seeing as the silver routing for this category is just entirely, completely lenient. There's far more than 450 silver that you need to beat the game, just standing right in the way where you can get them. This level, I think it's 4-2, two, four two introduces the pink platforms that you've seen. They will switch uh, between on and off every time you jump. So when they're on, they'll turn off, and when they're off, they'll turn on. And whether they're off there or they're on, uh, uh, it's really important to uh, just route and keep track of uh, for the speedrun, just knowing whether you've got an on-platform or an off-platform can certainly save your life and save quite a few seconds, and especially in that last room where I always forget and then waste three seconds going back and switching the platforms, etc. 4-3 is very cycle dependent, but the cycles line up in such a way that you will usually make them if you don't spend a long time collecting silvers in the first half of the level. Uh, it's also one way you can get any extra gold that you may have missed over the course of the rest of the run. Uh, luckily, Jim has not missed any gold so far in the route. So, this should be perfectly on track. And we'll, we'll see after this level, there should be, I believe, yes, all 32 gold that you need uh, to unlock all the levels in this world. Four four has this hidden secret or this hidden portal exit. Uh, it's got a lot of secrets in it actually, but this portal exit is absolutely required to beat the game. And of course it's required in this category anyways, because we do need to beat all the levels. Hey, we've got a game. <laughs> nice. So, uh, now we go back through this level. 
complete the rest of it up to where we were and then the second half of it. The second half has more rotating lasers and also more green cannon because you can never have enough green cannon except there's always far too many green cannons. Green cannons are just really unhelpful as enemies. They don't do what you want them to, ever. They will snipe you from anywhere. Now, 4-7 secret exit right here uh, is one of the more difficult ones in the run. It's because of the fact that there are green cannons shooting at you from everywhere. Uh, you have to get the coins right next to them. And you're dodging a ton of the platforms midair. It's just no fun. And if you hadn't had enough of green cannons yet, boy, have we got something for you. Uh, green cannon machine guns in this level and this level only. Uh, they will shoot continuously a stream of the pro projectiles at you uh, and just generally be difficult to dodge. That right there is a nice little skip, though. And then we've got the end of the level. Now we can go on to the entire rest of this level, which is actually quite interesting. Uh, a lot of it is based on some cycles that have the capabilities of being very awkward. Some of these cycles just don't line up no matter how hard you try uh, from certain checkpoints. So the key is to take restarts from uh, specific checkpoints so you know what cycle you will be on. Uh, and knowledge of your cycle is incredibly important. Now we've got uh, this level 4-8, introducing the green platforms uh, that disappear. I introduce every new type of platform as, oh, it disappeared. Because I just don't know what else to say. They disappear. They just disappear at different times. Anyways, the green ones disappear in cycles because we haven't had enough cycles yet in this game. So... <laughs> A lot of these strats in this level are all meant to just skip the cycles of the green platforms or to disregard them. This and this second to last and last room have very crazy no way strats that were recently found to skip uh, 
cycle of those green platforms, and in total it saves about 10 seconds over the old strats. Now we're on to the part of the run that actually needed that gold. We unlocked that top section because we collected 29 gold at least. And that has this level and the level after it, 3-5 and 3-A. 3-5 introduces these uh, yellow blocks in which you can jump infinitely many times without using your double jump. And then we have the portal. The portal in this one is a very long one and has a pretty difficult double jump right there uh, where you have to be almost off the end of the screen. This level has a nice skip uh, right here. Uh, normally you are supposed to flip gravity there one more time, but instead if you just let it be there, uh, you will get that, which will let you fall down that section instead of using the gravity flip uh, in it to change the side or down. And now we're back to 4-5. Uh, now, the last part of this level has just a conglomeration of everything that uh, has been in the level previously. Bunch of saws, bunch of moving things. Everything is out to kill you. And finally, we get to the part where we needed those 32 gold before we entered this level. Uh, this level introduces these blue fields, the levity fields, uh, which will pretty much have gravity. Cut it in half. That lets you jump higher and fall slower, which are both really nice because you kind of have to. Otherwise, this platforming is literally impossible. Yeah. And then 4B expands upon that. Uh, using it and flipping keeps its gravity at half. You can do a really nice skip in this room because the gravity is at half and you move into that. You just keep the momentum longer. And then this room is very difficult, very tight. Uh, you have to have very precise height throughout this. This should be enough height. Uh, and there it is. That red field at the very end, that's a gravity field uh, that will pretty much double the gravity. So uh, makes it jump shorter and make it fall accelerating faster. Now this fall is dangerous because there's not a way to stop yourself and it's pretty narrow. That was nice execution though. Uh, the second half of this level emphasizes the gravity fields a lot more than the first half, which never had any. So. We're going to have a lot of very short stuttered platforming. That last jump is particularly difficult just because you don't have as much height as you think you will. And now we have Four Skull, the Tower of Power. This is the longest level in the game. Uh, it has just a of sections in a row is really a gauntlet 
of everything that's been in the game up to this point. Uh, you've got uh, the platform, you've got the discs, you've got the green arrows, you've got the lasers, everything that's been here. Uh, and more coming soon to a theater near you. And right here, uh, we have a, we skip this section by just going through here, slightly faster to do this, go through those two rooms, than it is to go through that section normally. Now we've got the second section of the level. This is slightly shorter, but it has two difficult sections. That one with the platforming precisely in between those discs uh, with the infinite jumps. Uh, and then after it, the same platforms at the beginning, but now we've got green cannons. Because why the heck not? Makes it ten times more difficult. Basically, that's how you make anything more difficult in this game. You want it to be harder? Add a green cannon. And here we have one of the important tricks in the game. The pixel. You just stand on that door. It a property of the wall in this game. If there's that gray type, it usually will have a different hitbox than whatever, or, or a larger, either larger or smaller, depending uh, on what the type of surface around it is. So you can really just stand on that. There's no other way about it. It's just a completely invisible way that you can stand on the wall. I see. Now we've got the final section of this level, which is the two hardest rooms. Uh, that last jump of this second last room is one of the most difficult jumps in the entire game. It's really precise when you have to press left, when you have to double jump, how you have to double jump. If you double, double jump any more than a few frames there, you will die. This, just making those cycles is incredibly difficult on that room. And then you just bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Oh, uh, no. Jumping over there. Now we're on to season five, our world five, whatever we want to call it. Uh, the entire theme of this world is fire and lava. Uh, have, you have to dodge a bunch of fire. You have to avoid a bunch of lava bubbles, I guess. I don't know if there's an official name for them. Never asked. Maybe should ask. Maybe should just make one. Who knows? We're speedrunners, we get to name things ourselves. 5-2 Hot Drop and Scroll. Exactly what the title would suggest. It's hot, 
the platforms will drop when you stand on them. And it ends with an auto scroller. Why not? This auto scroller is the longest auto scroller in the game. It is longer than either section of Two Dash Skull just because of the way the mechanic works. It's scrolling downwards on a single platform. I'm just going to explain it as much as I can. You want to really to go through that auto scroller. You want to up the enemies the correct way because if you do not line them up with each other they will kill you fairly often that was really important stand on there you let the auto scrolling platform move up past you and then you just kind of fall down the entire level and you skip the auto scroller because we're speedrunners <laughs> we can skip auto scrollers if we want to on saves 40 seconds to a minute and a half. I think the 40 seconds is third try. What it saves. Five three has what is probably the most difficult uh, portal exit of the run. Uh, just the cycle on that spinner can be anywhere, really. And getting it to line up is not simple because you kind of bounce in the rhythm of it. But of course, it leads to a fairly simple level. This is just a rehash of the blue and yellow platforms before we really get back into them. 5 3 again. But first we have 5-6, five, 5-6 six. Five, six secret exit to be precise, uh, or portal exit or whatever. I'm bad with names, okay? This level is very fast paced. You just go through every room really quickly. No time for me to explain any of it. <laughs> just gotta sit back and enjoy. Now 5-6 has, as you saw a little bit earlier, these uh, hidden platforms that are just translucent and blend in with the background. You have to catch them from the shine off of the background and the surrounding objects. And also the kind of things that follow them, like uh, for those particular ones, the uh, silvers that are on top of them. Now this is real the run. Uh, going backwards through this world. Uh, going to 5-3. We get back again to these uh, blue platforms and the double jump and single jump platforms. Which I think I got their names backwards earlier. section is really difficult because the platforms are just so narrow and you want to go fast and you have to go so fast really because of the uh, uh, disc that's chasing you couple of levels 
before the end. We've got 5-4. Five, 5-4 four. Five, four is just a kind of a level in six parts, really. Uh, you just go back and forth across with the discs jumping over the lava, avoiding the spikes. You can jump onto the platform's discrepancies there. Or at the end, even. Now we've got 5-5 five, five, Hot Rocks. It is the tightest platforming in the game. Outside of possibly that last jump in Four Skull. But even then. Uh, you've just got nowhere to go except for the ended route. Finally on to five boss. It's the end game. Uh, this level is really fun because it's centered around the parallel worlds. Where you go inside of the portals it has more platforms and such inside of the said parallel worlds. This section is difficult because green cannons. Which is why you really want to make the fast cycle here. For most of these rooms, there is a fast cycle and a slow cycle that you can make. The fast cycle involves uh, going through the entire room, only a single portal. And the slow cycle, uh, you the intermediate portal in the middle. You want to go through as many of them can on a fast cycle and take the rest of them on a slow cycle, such as this one, whose fast cycle is pretty much RNG dependent. And this one here, which involves really precise tricks to get the fast cycle, and it's pretty much IL only anyways. And the final section of this level has no fast cycle or slow cycle except for technically the very end. If we're going to get technical. Uh, there's only one port in this section. It's 20 whole seconds and you have to complete the entire section. That was close to the fast cycle I was mentioning. You can get all of those and get in before the end, but incredibly tight and now we have the real final level 5-x the final showdown this is the final boss of the run that right there is the boss will mimic your movements exactly uh, and as it goes it grows a Uh, and as it gets longer, the tail gets wider. Uh, which is not very fun if you, uh, want to go back somewhere. This were. It makes this one of the most uh, unforgiving levels. So, uh, if you fall down, uh, even if you land on a platform, there's usually no go you were and you reroute around everything.
that right there is difficult because you just need to get the checkpoint before you get to the final uh, key, but it's a long time just between these two keys uh, and to get back to that checkpoint. basic premise being you get all four keys you get uh, to the end now you've got now I've got three of the keys the green blue and yellow and all that's left is the red key right at this uh, top corner of the level Now all that's left to do is to get to the end. It's more challenging than it should be. Time is coming up. Time hits the portal. Three, two, one, time. Alrighty, thanks uh, Emoji for that run. If you have any like uh, community chilling or things you want to say, here's a chance to do it. Oh yeah, we have a Discord. I'm going to try to get the link to that. Uh, give me a second. Uh, yeah, Super Hoot Lumi Live, the game in general, has a Discord with a speedrunning section. We really love uh, having new runners. It's always great. Um, I'm pretty sure him leaving was unintentional. Uh, do you, uh, he accidentally left the live chat when he was halfway through, like, shilling your Discord, or shilling the community Discord. So, do you want to finish your shilling for him? I'll, um, is it on speedruns live? Like, do you have it in the speedrun on um STRC? Oh yeah, it was supposed to be time like when the portal was hit, like like two minutes ago, Manix. They called time. That's not your fault. I th no, your commentator did call time, but. I think the restreamer may be, yeah, daydreaming. It's all good. Uh, yeah, I, I try. I don't know if it'll work. If not, I'll let Maddox get it. Maddox, you can let it go through or something. <laughs> 